In this video, I'm going to show you all the basics of fly tying. I'm going to show you exactly how to use dubbing, how to tie in a hackle, uh, how to turn that hackle and so on. So in this part two uh, of, of the fly tying series of fly tying for beginners, we're going to see exactly how to uh, use all of these great materials. So now we're ready to start. And uh, I invented this fly for this occasion. We've just done the video in, in Danish. So, so um, this fly is a relatively simple one, but we're gonna, we're gonna use this to illustrate and to, to show you exactly how to do all these different techniques. So the, the reason why we chose orange and blue is because they're complementary colors and, and they, they will, you will see very easily uh, the, different, uh, the different techniques involved. The first thing that's important is that when you mount your hook, that it has a solid, uh, a, that your vise has a solid grip on it. There is a lot of different grips from vices to vices, but make sure that your hook is well uh, lodged in between the, the jaws and that the, 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 the hook shank is, is aligned uh, horizontally. So, now we're good to go. The first thing you need to do is to mount your thread. And the way you do that is basically you take your thread here and then you turn with your bobbin behind the thread itself. So it locks the thread in place. Once you've done that, and uh, you, can, you can safely leave your bobbin hanging and the, the weight of the bobbin will, will keep uh, tension on the thread and, and keep, keep everything in place so you have both your hands to use for all the, all the rest of the stuff that's going to go on here. Now, it's important that you make a solid and complete uh, coverage of the, of the hook shank here all the way down to where you're gonna start to tie your fly. Because when you tie flies, you start from the tail and then you move uh, up to watch the finish, to watch the head of the fly. So basically you're tying a fly in reverse. So we're gonna cover the hook shank here uh, thoroughly with thread. The reason we do this is because um, the hook shank in, it, in of itself is, is, a, is of course made of, of metal. So it's, it's very slick and it's hard to get materials to latch onto this without having some kind of base. And that's what the thread is here. The thread is gonna be the base that's gonna make your fly a lot stronger, a lot more durable. Now we have, uh, uh, we have uh, moved the thread all the way down to where we're going to stop the fly. Typically, it will be at the point where the hook starts to bend. So it's, on some hooks, it's, it's just above the, the barb. On other hooks, it's a bit further up. But just, just where the hook starts to bend is a good place to start your fly. Now, for this fly, we need a tail. And you can, of course, make your tail from uh, a multitude of different, different materials. But for this one, we're just gonna do a very easy one. And we're gonna use uh, some, some, uh, some feather, some feather uh, fibers. I'm just gonna pick off some of these. This, this is not the, the, the most important thing. The most important thing are the technique. So now I have a bundle of, uh, of hackle fibers, and we're gonna tie these on as the tail. So when you when you want to 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 uh, to have the right properties on a fly like this, you uh, you want to to look at the the size of the tail and decide uh, how long you want the tail. For a fly like this and 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 many flies in, in general, uh, you should not have a tail that's longer than the portion of the hook that is the shank you're tying on. So you can measure it out like this, and then see okay about this length is good. Then you switch the material to your left hand. And you hold the material in between your, uh, your thumb and your index finger. And then you, you, you slide the hook in between those fingers until the material is placed on top of the hook. Then you take the thread and you make a loose turn. You put the thread up between your fingers so it's, it's locked there. And then you move the thread all the way around. And then you pull upwards because it will get an even tension all the way around and you will be sure that your materials are fastened where they ought to be. Now you see I have a nice tail. Maybe it's a bit short. If you want it a bit longer, you can, you can ease the tension of the thread and pull it a little, like so. Now we're gonna fasten the tail with a few more turns of the thread. Be careful when you apply the thread. Think about every single time how many turns of thread you're using because if you use too much, 
you of course will get a strong fly, but you will also create a quite big bulge of, of thread here. And this will make the fly more difficult to actually be, uh, be good looking, be well proportioned and, and good looking. So I'm gonna rewind this and, and say about this amount of turns, uh, and, and maybe pull a bit on your thread without pulling too much and snapping the thread so the materials are locked in place. Now we can cut away this so we have a clean, a, a clean working area. Now, for this fly I want to show you how to tie and use a palmer hackle. A palmer hackle is basically a hackle that's going to cover the complete hook shank and for this we're going to use a rooster. When you have a cape like this, um, there is a lot of feathers on there and there is a lot of different types of feathers. I have made a very extensive video explaining everything about roosters, about hens, about capes and saddles and all of that and you can find that on, on, on this YouTube channel as well. But for this we need, we need a, a, a feather, a rooster feather, so I know how to do this and basically you can, you can, you can bend the, uh, the, the leather here on, on the cape and you can look at all the, different, uh, all the different hackles. So you bend the hackle like this and then you pick one out. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna take this one I think is well suited. So now I've decided because of my experience about the size of, of the feather, but a way you can check if the feather has the right length and the, the right, uh, the right uh, properties compared to the fly that you want. Basically, um, you want a feather for most flies that, that starts out being approximately, and, and also at the finish line, approximately uh, the same length as from the shank to the point of the hook. So if you have a feather, uh, that's, that's a good ground rule. If you have a feather that is about that length, when you, when you, when you fold the feather over the hook to see if it, if it looks good, if you have a feather of approximately that length, you're, you're, you, you have something that is, is, that is a good uh, rule of thumb. So, in order to prepare this feather further, I pull off all the, all the woolly part of the feather here, and then I look at this feather. On the feather there is a top side and a bottom side. And you want the top side to be the side that is, 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 um, is tied in here, so that every time you, you turn the hackle, all the natural curves of the feathers will move backwards. Um, again, a feather like this, um, uh, you want the fly to have the right uh, proportions, so we're gonna tie this in at the tip, because when you look at the feather, uh, the longest fibers are closer to the bottom of the feather and, the, and the, the shorter fibers are to the tip of the feather. And because of this, we want the shortest fibers here and then it will gradually be longer as we move up towards the, uh, up towards the eye. In order for us to get that effect, we need to tie the feather in at the tip. So I very carefully take my thumb and my index finger and then I brush these back without peeling them off. This way you will get the tip of the feather here and the tip of the feather will be easier for you to tie down. So we fold this carefully backwards and now we hold it. And uh, now I have the, uh, the upper side which is the, the, the most shiny part of the feather and I'm gonna tie this on so it, it faces upwards. And this is really important because this will help us get the right curve of the feathers here all the way up towards the eye. So now my feather is, has, been, has been attached, used maybe five turns of thread to, to secure it, like so. And now it's time to compose the rest of the body. And uh, because we want a complementary color, we're gonna use some, some blue dubbing for this and I'm gonna show you two different techniques for actually making the dubbing. The first one is, is the simplest one and does not require any tools besides your fingers. Um, what's important here is that um, um, there is a, a tendency, especially in, 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 in beginner fly tires, to use more material than is actually necessary. So when you pull out a, a, an amount of dubbing, uh, try starting out with half the amount that you initially, uh, initially thought, thought you were going to be using. I take this dubbing and I place it on the thread, and then basically what I do is I mold it into kind of like a sausage shape that's gonna go all the way around the uh, the thread. So the movement is like this and I use quite a lot of force to, to force it into shape. And you always go the, the same way. You don't do like this. This won't work. Then, then it will accomplish nothing. You do like this. 
So you, you, you mold it on your, on your thumb with your index finger and the movement is like this. Now you see I have this kind of uh, elongated sausage or whatever you want to call it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do what I can, you know, in explaining this, so... Um, English is not my native language, uh, if, if you hadn't guessed. Um, but um, but this this here, you can move that on the thread. It's 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 around the thread, but it's, it's possible to move it. So I move it all the way up, so the start of the dubbing here. Then I hold back the hackle, and then I start turning this here. So the effect you're you're aiming to uh, to get is is the dubbing to cover all your orange thread, of course, but also you want it to be uh, you want it to be um, uh, thinner towards the tail, and then gradually become thicker and thicker as you progress up the hook shank. Um, so you can see it's it's really thin down here, and then it's it's gradually becoming more and more dense and more and more bulky as you move up. That's the first uh, way of tying uh, dubbing. Um, and and it, it can be it can be a, a little easier and latch a bit more onto the thread if you use a dubbing wax for this part. Um, and this is one way of doing it. And, and this is used a lot for dry flies and nymph and, and a lot of different things. But there is another uh, very good way of, of, of using dubbing that's with a dubbing loop. What you do with the dubbing loop is basically you take your thread, then you double your thread with your index finger of your left hand, and then you do exactly the same as when we started. You tie over the thread in order to fasten it. So now I have this this loop here, this this loop of thread, but because the uh, the opening down here is is uh, is a bit too wide, then you take your thread and you move it a full rotation around the base of your loop, and then you tie it down. Now that means that the opening here is going to be uh, is going to be very very much narrow, more narrow. Now you can you can you can leave your dubbing loop off to the side. You have both your hands free, and you can take another bundle of dubbing. You prepare the dubbing for the dubbing loop by pulling it so it's it's gonna be um, a bit elongated. It's gonna be longer than it is wide, and this will fit perfectly inside your dubbing loop. The way you use your dubbing loop is you take your index finger on your uh, left hand, and you use that to hold the dubbing loop open. Then you can use your middle finger to to pull it the loop open, or to close it by laying it on top here. So I open the dubbing loop, I put in the dubbing in between the two threads, and then I close the dubbing loop with my other finger. Then I push all the dubbing all the way up to uh, as, as close to as close to the shank as possible. Then I take my dubbing reel, attach it to the uh, to the loop here, and then I spin it. What this will accomplish is as soon, and, and I hold firmly with my index finger and my thumb here. Then I l release this, and then you get kind of like a, uh, kind of like the same effect as before with this this bulky, long sausage of, of dubbing. But what you see here is this is way more fluffy, and this is easier to pull some of the dubbing out to get a more fluffy body. Just gonna do one more, and also a dubbing loop like this is a lot stronger because we have the dubbing interwoven between the two uh, the two strands of uh, of tying thread. Now I, I should have done this before, but but I'm gonna move my tying thread closer to the eye. There we go. If you want, you can pull some of this dubbing out uh, already. Uh, to give this a bit more fluffy, but you will see very soon how these two types of uh, how these two techniques differ in in how the uh, how they will look on the fly. So I turn this and I turn it carefully uh, a bit forward for every turn. Then I fold the dubbing here a bit backwards for every turn that I make. There we go. Fold it back. There we go. Fold it back. And now up here I want actually one more turn in order to get the tapering right. So I just made a turn uh, behind. Now to tie this down, you will have to have it on top here and then angle it a bit forward. And then tie your tying thread on top of this here. 
because this will lock the dubbing the dubbing loop in place uh, securing everything you have and now it's secure you can cut it off cut it away just gonna make sure that it's nice and and firmly attached and now you can see the difference in the two types of uh, uh, using dubbing you can see this one down here it's 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 very compact it's not as dense but it's compact and this one here is quite a lot more fluffy and quite a lot more translucent so depending on the fly depending on what the effect you you're aiming for you can use these two techniques now I'm gonna fold that a bit backwards and then we're gonna take the hackle and uh, when you're when you're using a hackle like this like a body hackle what you're aiming for is something along the lines of uh, of four to five turns of the hackle before you end up near the eye. You can have more and you can have less depending on, on the effect you're going for, but, um, but a, good, uh, a, a good way of, of getting the properties, the proportions right on, on, on a fly like this is try to aim for four to five turns of the hackle. Of course, as you turn the hackle, it's important that the distance between the individual turns here are as close to evenly uh, evenly uh, spaced as possible. This will will give. This is what will will uh, distinguish a good looking fly from a great looking fly. So if you have the same distance between those, it will simply be more pleasing to the eye. I don't know if if when when I say the eye, it's it's the eye of the beholder. It's not the eye of the fish. I'm not sure if the fish can count turns of hackle. I don't think they do at least. But um, but but in order for you to be more satisfied with the actual result, it's it's okay to have flies that look that look their best. So there we go. I think my my spacing here was actually as as good as as it gets. Uh, and I have five turns of the hackle now. Um, on the first one I did, I ended up with four, so it was a bit sparser. But but still, four look is is looking good. But so is five. You can see the difference here. Nah, maybe you can't, but you can see that this is that there is more room between the different uh, the different. But it still looks good. There is there is more room. So this is a sparser dressed fly. The first one I made. Making sure that I cut away as much as possible. And again, when I when I when I fastened the hackle, what I did was. I, I held the hackle out here and then I tied on top of the hackle so, so that I fastened my hackle with the tying thread before I cut it away. So everything that goes on the right side, on this side from, from the eye out, when you tie on top of it will be, will be, will be held in place. Now what you can do now is, is you, can, you can brush out some of the dubbing here and you can force the hackle to be even more pointing backwards with your dubbing brush. I mean, you can see before I even did this, because we, we had the hackle, uh, we tied in the hackle correctly, the, the, the curve of the hackle was already pointing backwards towards the tail. But you can, you can enhance that effect by, using, by applying your dubbing brush. You can also draw out some of the dubbing using the dubbing brush, if you want a more fluffy body. So, now, for this next part, I'm gonna show you how to tie in a wing. Um, here I have a piece of, uh, of Arctic Fox, which is, uh, is, is, is a nice material for, 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 for wings. And basically what you do is, is you, you, you take out a bundle of this and with materials like this, and basically with any materials, it's very important that when you pick up this, even though we do not want a really long, uh, a really long um, wing, what we do is we cut away all the way near the uh, near the actual the actual the actual leather, because otherwise you will end up with having a, a piece of material where some of it has has had all the tips cut off, and and that will simply not be uh, be be usable uh, if if you want, uh, for instance, to tie another fly with a longer tail. So every time you cut away something, you cut it away all the way to the base. Uh, that way your, your materials will be usable for, for a lot longer time. So for this one, I do not want these longest hairs. So I, I hold very firmly with my left hand while I trim the, the tip of the, uh, of the wing here with my, uh, with my right hand. 
we do not cut in any of the uh, you do not cut in any of the materials out here because you want the natural the natural tapering of a wing wing like this you want the natural tapering of the hairs in order for this fly to look as to look its best the wing was a bit too dense so i simply just took out took out some of this and pulled it away now it has about the, the, the right size for me here. And you can see this by, by uh, continuously uh, looking at it with your putting it on. Oh, sorry about that. I kicked the camera. <laughs> Are we OK, Stephen? Okay. Yeah, OK. By continuously taking and, 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 and measuring if, if, it's, if it's the size that you need. If it's not, simply remove more hairs. So uh, a wing like this, you want this uh, for, for this fly to be uh, the properties, the proportions of this to be correct for, for this particular pattern. I want my wing to be roughly the same length as the tip of my tail. Uh, you can do it even longer and that could work as well. But, but it's very, very rare that you want a wing that is shorter than the tail. So about the same length as, as out to the tip of the tail is a good, is a good way of making something that, that looks good and has the right um, properties. Again, I do exactly the same thing as I did with the tail. I hold my, uh, my wing on top of the hook. Then I take the thread up between my fingers, put it one loose turn around, and then when I'm on opposite, I pull. So the, the pull is gonna be even all the way around. Then I use a few more turns to secure my wing. And there we have it. Now, I'm gonna cut away the, the leftover of this Arctic Fox. And a good trick is to simply just twist the materials here so you can get as close as possible. And then you can cut away all of this at one go, almost. <laughs> well, at four goes at least. Now, you have to be sure that your materials are nice and, uh, and secure um, because uh, otherwise we don't start to pull on this until you have, uh, you have applied some pressure to the tying thread because otherwise you can, you can easily pull out the, the wing here. So far so good. Now the final stage of this, this fly here is to make a front hackle. Um, and again, I want to show you uh, how that's done, but in order to do this a bit differently from, from the other, I'm going to show you how to do it with, uh, with a hen feather. We use the rooster feathers because those are a bit stiffer and, and they're, not as, they're not as dense. So they're really, really good for creating this illusion of life, this, this transparency, uh, which is the hallmark of, of the, the rooster capes. The, the, hen, the hen feathers are a bit more dense and these are really, really good for giving the fly kind of the, uh, kind of the look of, of, of a head almost uh, shape. So you can see here, uh, out here we have the, uh, the, the hen attached out here. And what that does is it kind of gives the finishing part of the fly a bit more density, making the fly uh, effect of the, uh, of the tapering that we have on the body uh, even more, uh, even, even, uh, even more um, visible. So I pick out one of these feathers again. I remove all the fluffy part here because we don't need that. Those simply will not look good on the on the on the on the fly. And then, as before, I locate the top side and the uh, and, and the lower side, and then I fold this back ever so gently. It's easier to do with uh, with. Um, with hens than with roosters. So now I've folded the feathers back and I tie this in the same way as I did with the, with the, uh, with the rooster. I tie it on top here. Make sure it's nice and secure before I cut away the tip of the feather. Now, as you can see, when I start turning this, the, uh, the, the curve of the feather is already pointing backwards. And this is the effect we're going for. But I'm gonna help it along. So I'm just gonna fold it and, and make sure that it's, it's folded backwards as I turn. So I, I support and help it attain that natural curve. Then I turn just in front of the, uh, 
just in front of the uh, the wing here. There we go. And of course, depending on how uh, how uh, how uh, big you want the hackle, you you can you can vary it the size of this as well, and how dense you want it, you can you can you can do less turns, or you can even peel off a uh, half of the uh, one side of of the hackle here. I think this is about appropriate. So now I I again I hold this out to an angle, and then I tie with my tying thread just behind the eye on top of the hackle to make sure that it stays in place before I cut this away. Then I cut away the, uh, the leftovers. I fold everything back and then I tie and make a small good looking head here. I tie a bit on top of some of the, some of the fibers here in order to force them backwards to give them that right nice curve. And there you have it. Absolutely like it should be. <laughs> so now we have a really, really small head, um, which again is something that you, that you want to strive for. You want to have a smaller head as possible, not because it's, it's, it's important for the fish, I think, but it's important for you to feel that that, that is one of the, 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 the things that, you know, uh, that distinguish uh, a, a, a very good fly tire from a maybe not as good fly tire. It's the size of the head. The, 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 this is something that you want to practice. You want to, to have as small a head as possible. Do not uh, be alarmed or do not thread if, if you have a really, really big head on your fly. It's a very smart fly then, um, some people say, and, and it will catch fish anyway. But I'm just saying that over time, one, one of the things that you should work on is, is to try to get as small as a head as possible. And actually, I'm really, really pleased with this because this tying thread is very, very thick compared to the, the normal thread I use. So, um, so I've, I've done good here. I'm, 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 I'm very pleased with the results here. Okay, now it's time to do the whip finish. And again, in the beginner, uh, in, in the in the video part one here, in the beginner's guide part one, I showed you exactly how to use the whip finish. You 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 catch the thread with one of the uh, one of the hooks here, the top one, and then you catch the lower hook with the other one. Then you make the triangle. Then you make maybe three or four knots. There we go. Use some force. You can make more if you want, but it's it's not necessary or something like this. And then you can apply either the varnish. If you use varnish and you want a nice and shiny head, you're gonna apply varnish maybe three or four times. Uh, or you can you can go with the uh, the the stronger and less time-consuming um, uh, option, which is the saber gap. The saber gap, you only need to apply a small amount of this to to the actual head here. And it will it will greatly enforce your fly, making sure that your head will not uh, the thread there will not uh, due to trout's teeth or or whatever will will not start to unwind. Basically, that covers um, the uh, the tutorial for today. The the fly tying beginners lesson uh, lesson two. Um, uh, what I really would like is for you to leave some response here, a commentary, because um, I can do more of these with, with uh, a bit more advanced techniques, and, and there are some, some, some very logical way of, of doing the next video in this series. But, but it's important for us here, we would like some feedback to know if, if you enjoyed the series, if, if you think that this is actually useful, um, because we want to produce content that you like and, and, that, and that you can you know, relate to and, and is, is working for you. So, so feel free, please, please leave a comment here on the on the video, so so we will know um, we will know if, if you like this. Um, also, if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to us. Um, and uh, if you're ever um, uh, in need of any fly tying material whatsoever, swing by NordicAnglers.com. We have well almost everything you could possibly ever wish for uh, in in fly tying, but also in fly fishing equipment. Um, so basically, that covers it. Thank you very much for watching and um, good luck out on the water. <laughs>